We sometimes think of the Gospels as just one big book. It all kind of goes together. Uh, that impression that we have is uh, perhaps uh, a little enhanced by the fact that we process up with the book of the Gospels. Today it was Carol and, and Father Jeff just proclaimed the Gospel from what's called the book of the Gospels. Uh, however, there are actually four different Gospels contain, contained in that book. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, sometimes. You probably learn the names of the gospel writers, the evangelists, when you were young. Uh, there are some similarities between these gospels. After all, they're, they're all writing about Jesus, telling stories about Jesus, but there are also some differences between the evangelists between these, these gospel writers. Because each of them was writing to their own community. And there was something special about Jesus that they wanted to emphasize to their community. So which gospel is the best? all of them and none of them. Which is to say that the picture of Jesus that emerges from all four Gospels taken together is richer than the picture of Jesus that emerges from one Gospel all by itself. The fact, though, that there are four different Gospels uh, kind of leads us to have sometimes a, a favorite Gospel. For example, my favorite Gospel is the Gospel of Matthew. Part of the reason I like Matthew best of all is that he uses a literary technique known as paradox. A paradox, as you probably know, is, is, a, is a statement that seems self-contradictory. It doesn't, on the surface, look like it makes any sense, but it is in fact true. Matthew uses paradox especially to make a distinction between the way that we human beings think and the way that God thinks. Today's gospel is a good example. Jesus says, whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Again, a paradox doesn't seem to make sense. How does losing lead to finding? In other words, how does death lead to life? Death isn't exactly a, a popular topic for us Americans. Uh, the title of a 2017 book says a lot, I think. Can't we talk about something more pleasant? The author of this book contends that uh, Americans uh, just in general don't confront the reality of our mortality and that we label any kind of talk about death 
as morbid. Now, it wasn't always this way. In the, in the late 19th century, for example, people were, were pretty comfortable with the idea of death, partly because um, people in the dying process were not in hospitals, they, they were in their own home. And in their own home is generally where the funeral took place. So, how do we all now become more comfortable with the idea of death? One way is excuse me, to play, pay closer attention to today's gospel. Jesus is basically saying that we must choose. Choose to lose. Choose to lose our lives. Choose to die, die to ourselves. We die to ourselves by surrendering our own agendas for ourselves and embracing God's agenda for us. And of course the question, so what is God's agenda for us? Simply put, to glorify him. Now there are lots of ways for us to glorify God. I kind of narrowed it down for this, this homily to three. Glorify God by praising God with our words and with our actions, by serving the good of other children of God, and by trusting God more than we trust ourselves. Praise God, serve others, trust in God. I did it like that because I can't make a three. I never, I never have been able to. Now I have an excuse. <laughs> Again, praise God, serve others, trust God. Now these are all ways of losing our lives. But of course, by losing our lives, we will find our lives by dying, dying to ourselves. We will live. And we will live not just someday in the perfection of heaven, but we will live more fully right here and right now. That's what discipleship of Jesus Christ is really all about.